Hey guys, today we are installing our SPC upper control arms and our Old Man Emu Nitro Sport Shocks that we got in our Slee Off-Road Lift Kit. And we're also installing our Trail Tailored Drop Links. Just like the torsion bars, you're going to see that the driver's side caused me a little more trouble. It was the first time I was getting into all this stuff. And the passenger side went super easy. You should catch a few of those mistakes along the way. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. These videos are for entertainment purposes and to give you an idea of the things you might encounter when you're doing one of these jobs. If it's not something you're completely comfortable doing, hire a professional to do it for you or get someone to help you. Alright, I think I'll do this the same way I did the, the one in the back. Get my vice grips up on here. Ice grip trick worked pretty good though. And we're gonna get this lower one off here. Cool thing is, we can use the breaker bar here. Right, easy. Get these washers out of here. I should be able to compress this guy. Like that. <clears throat> All right, one out. Now the new ones for the front are the sixty thousand. Got a bag of washings and bushers, just like bushings, just like the other one, just like the rears. And I'm just putting PB blaster and everything and cleaning everything out as much as I can. All right, so I'm gonna pop this little bracket off. Holds the shot compressed. And then the slider up in there. Let it start to do its business of expanding here. So while it's expanding in position, I'm, oh, forgot one thing. Gotta get the bushing. First bushing. Like this. Like a compress. A little bit harder than the stock one to compress. Put this on silver washer down and the sort of gold zinc plated washer up since that kind of fits in the mounting tower there I stick this bottom bolt back in get this nut on finger tight back here see that sort of expanding up right now so I'll be able to get the, the top nut on again the zinc plated one's gonna go down into the tower Put the silver one up top and then I got my top nut here so again on this guy, I thought I might be able to get my torque wrench in here, but I couldn't. So I'm going to do it by feel and get them nice and tight. I tightened this one down until it bottomed out on the threads. It just snugged up pretty tight. I'm going to do the bottom. Shock is in. All right, now I'm going to just take a little bit of pressure off this A-arm. One of the first things you got to do to get the upper control arm off, but also it should help me with the drop link. These are the same size as the back 14. First thing I'm going to do is just get this top one loosened a little. Hopefully, we won't have the same problem that we had on that back one. These rubber bushings are definitely shot, so this is a Good thing to get done right now. It's nice to have a little access here so I can get a breaker bar on that. And that's just super easy. Doing this is going to be a pain. I'm wondering if jacking up the other side a little bit will twist this arm and make it go up. So I'm going to Try. On the passenger side, we ended up placing the jack under the sway bar. That was much easier, and you can check that out later in the video. We jacked up the other side, and that got us just enough to get this in. So, let me get the bottom tight. Realize I did not have any cotter pins, so before I get started on this 
UCA, I'm going to pop it out of here and go, go buy a couple. So don't forget, you need some of these. Get this jack up under the lower control arm. Take a little bit of pressure off. Put that under there just for good measure. Get these lines off, the ABS lines. We gotta make sure this is out of the way. So if this thing pops up, and this shouldn't drop because I have it supported. Let me go ahead and take this one off too, just to just make sure this stuff is totally out of the way. Look at that. Okay, now I'm just gonna loosen all of these a little bit. So this is 19. All right, I'm using my breaker up top here. This guy off now. I hope I can pop this without a lot of trouble. Um, I probably should have a puller tool and I may have to go get one if it doesn't work out. Um, I've got a ball joint spreader fork, which is probably not the right tool for this. But I also know that I'm not reusing this upper control arm, so I can even just bang on that, but I've done that in the past. Booyah! Oh. It's way easier than I thought that was gonna be. Well, just gotta get in here and get these guys out. Nice and clean up there. Beautiful. Right, out. Out. Boom. Wow. Went much easier than I thought. All right, so I need, I need half of all this stuff, I think. Or they call it spacers. All right, I guess I don't need to do the ride height sensor bracket because I don't have a ride height sensor. This is to put a little little grease on the outside of here. Just to hold the hold these X spacers on. And it says to slide this in. We have some biscuit. Not quite enough grease, I suppose. Son of a biscuit! Oh no! Not good. Dang it. Nice. So that just fell right in there and that is not going to come out of there. Yes. All right. More grease. Lots of grease. Very careful this time. Don't touch anything. Okay, one in. Oh no. Again. Was a little rough. Now it says to put these on in the neutral position. I'm sh assuming that's just straight down. Didn't even need this. Came with its own new cotter pin. That's awesome. If you are raised two to three inches of left, setting D should return the caster to factory specification. Try this bracket off the wire, it says with the screwdriver. Right, down. That was easy. Two down. And this is the little bracket that comes with the kit. Okay, I'm gonna torque these 